Также для развития именно предпринимательства здесь мы проводим мастер-классы, семинары, которые именно вы получаете советы от бухгалтеров, от юристов. Все, что вот вам нужно для развития бизнеса. Плюс у нас проходят менторские сессии от успешных таких людей Узбекистана, которые построили не один, не два и даже не десять бизнесов. Никита Зафар Кашинов к нам приходит, основатель Корзинка, Мурат Бельдинс, основатель компании MyTaxi, CityTaxi, Бумакс, Декас, Дейли и так далее, и так далее. Практически вся такая вот бизнес лишь Узбекистана, такая же, в принципе, как и здесь, вида, именно которой занимается архитектура. Вот. А если у вас какие-нибудь возникнут вопросы в течение вашего семинара или что-то срочное, необходимое, нужное от нас, пожалуйста, обращайтесь к нашим, к моим коллегам, это Айвер и Миробос. Обращайтесь, они вам помогут ответить на ваши вопросы. А, у меня, в принципе, такое все. А, сейчас я хочу пригласить наших гостей гостей из Казахстана. У нас вот семена буквально организовался в течение двух дней. Я очень рад, что пришло такое большое количество людей. А, вот, она будет говорить, наши гости, на английском языке, а, с переводом на русский язык. А, сама презентация будет длиться в течение 30 минут. После 30 минут а, будет сессия а, такая вопросов и ответов, где также Здесь я вот вижу много архитекторов, дизайнеров. Она попросит рассказать об будущем вашем видении архитектуры в Узбекистане в ближайшие 3-5 лет. И а, также, если у вас будут вопросы касательно презентации, пожалуйста, задавайте, не стесняйтесь. К сожалению, в Узбекистане у нас таких а, случаев, когда приезжают а, такие эксперты, очень мало. Пожалуйста, пользуйтесь. Огромная-огромная к вам просьба. Все, у меня все. Спасибо. Так, теперь я хочу пригласить наших спикеров. So I'm here to present my company, to present some examples of our work, then to, to show, show you a case study, and then I would like to uh, listen from you what you, I believe that in this audience uh, most of you are architects or in construction industry, so I would like at the end to, to receive your feedback and to, to listen to your thoughts and your ideas and your expectations for the future of the, the city of the Tashkent and all cities in Uzbekistan. Because I think you explore and uh, um, the best ways to listen to you. Сейчас я буду рассказывать, сделаю небольшую презентацию от компании. Лучше микрофон. Да? Сейчас сюда мы сделаем презентацию о компании. Дальше, значит, она очень хотела бы услышать ваши вопросы, а также какие-то ожидания в плане изменений каких-то конкретных, которые могут произойти в Казахстане с учетом изменений экономики, политики и так далее. Пожалуйста, задавайте вопросы, делитесь своими впечатлениями. Нам будет очень рада их услышать. Okay. Is it working? Yes. So, uh, 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 so, we have already 20 years and uh, about 120 professionals. Значит, Сарава Асашиадос, Хорка СНА, был создан в 96 году, имеет опыт работы более 30 лет, и также работает в больше, чем 12 странах. So, we are focused in architecture, urban planning, 
um, interior design and recently we uh, opened also some two different areas which is green sorry green lab and concept design which I will explain first. Sorry, so I didn't so hold the microphone closer. Uh, I'm sorry, I will repeat. So uh, we are focused on architecture, urban planning, and interior design. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently we opened uh, two different areas. So uh, these are companies inside our company, which are focused in the sustainability and conceptual designs, not not so uh, related with architecture itself. Значит, наша компания специализируется в архитектуре, планировании градостроения. Также концептуальное планирование. Также наша компания имеет два направления. Это мира и дизайн интерьера. So we are present in 13 uh, different cities around the world in, in four continents. The only continent where we are not yet is uh, Australia. Мы работаем в 13 странах, в 4 континентах. Единственный континент, в котором мы еще не работаем, это Австралия. This is uh, architect Miguel Saraga. So he's the founder of the company. He is the one that gave the name to the company, Saraga and Associates. In Portuguese, Saraga and Associates. Uh, значит, это Мигель Сараева, основатель компании, основатель директор и который дал название компании. So, process of internal, we, uh, we need to adapt. We need to adapt to the culture. Uh, besides being uh, an architectural company with um, aesthetic uh, uh, of our own, we need to adapt to the culture of, of each location where we are. Uh, имея определенный опыт работы, uh, мы поняли, что в каждом, на каждом рынке мы должны адаптироваться, мы должны принимать учет потребностей этого рынка, специфики культуры, не акцентировать только на эстетических моментах архитектуры, в которой мы работали, поэтому мы поменяли свою стратегию и стали адаптироваться под рынок конкретного, под которым мы работаем. In the, um, uh, in the ranking of the, the biggest uh, company, architecture companies in the world. So from 2004 until 2017, we are increasing in the position and hopefully uh, still continue. Благодаря этому, потому что мы поменяли стратегию, у нас увеличилось количество проектов и индекс, то есть наш рейтинг, который в 2014 году, а до 2017 году он стал совершенно другим. Во второе место мы перешли на стратегию. Uh, there is always in our local teams a very close relation and communication with the team in this one, which is where we have the quality control, the, the leader architects, the senior architects, uh, that uh, that gives the the, the main approach to each project. В каждом проекте мы основываемся на нашу команду, которая базируется в Лиссабоне. Мы работаем с нашими менеджерами проектов, мы работаем с синие архитекторами, которые помогают нам с своими профессиональными навыками. This is our management board, just to give you an idea. So, Miguel Saraiva is up there, and then we have for each specific area. A director in each country where we are, we have a different person uh, uh, which is uh, responsible for that. Usually, the, our management team in each country is always an architect. Значит, с этой стороны основатель компании, и здесь представлены архитектора, архитектора, то есть по регионам, по проектам, и 
они обычно лидируют по конкретным сферам и областям. So I will show some examples of uh, works we do um, in specific uh, areas of architecture. So we have our actuation in almost all spheres of architecture, starting from housing until human planning, uh, passing through healthcare. We have a very good specialization in healthcare projects. Uh, and then some examples of the three other companies uh, which I Сейчас мы будем смотреть конкретные примеры проектов, которые мы реализовали, начиная с жилых домов, гостиницы, курорты, объекты здравоохранения. У нас очень хорошие проекты по реализации объектов здравоохранения, объекты строительства и так далее. So starting with housing, uh, one uh, building in Angola, so this is a built uh, building in 2014. Another example which is built, uh, this is in Portugal, a uh, uh, smaller scale residential building. Uh, Uh, an example in Colombia, uh, so this is a condominium, condominium of Colombia, which is in a building permit phase, so it's uh, waiting for the, the approval to start construction. Uh -huh. Another example in Portugal, this is a residential kind of tourist uh, uh, buildings from 2000. Well, and it's also built. Еще один проект из Португалии, он уже был построен в 2014 году. Now we go for uh, different scale to uh, private houses. This is an example of a uh, house in Brazil, which is uh, quite big, but it's taking consideration the swimming pool and the green areas around. Переводим в другой сектор частных домов. Это дом в Бразилии. С бассейнами, с домами. Another example in Portugal of private house. Еще один объект в Португалии. Another one. Еще один. Maybe the light is too bright to see, but it's just. Well, Vina, it's private house. Yes. Another private house, this is uh, close to, to the beach in a kind of pine tree forest. Another example of private house. This one is waiting for mission for construction. Project Jolova Doma. And uh, another sector of housing, uh, which is also uh, reconstruction, so rehabilitation of existing buildings. Uh, this is a case, an inter interesting case, because these existing buildings, uh, uh, three existing buildings in the city, in the north of Portugal, and uh, uh, investor bought the three old buildings, uh, and we um, put the, the three of them together to be only one building. So we maintain the facade, the original facade, and everything uh, uh, behind its new houses, modernized, uh, and everything is new. Это старый значит, жилой дом, старый жилой дом в Португалии. И три, как бы, три старого дома, они решили взять его и отремонтировать фасад, а все, что внутри, все модернизировано и обновлено. Another example, but this one in Lisbon. Это Лиссабоне, еще один проект жилого дома. In this case, we increased some floors, two additional floors of the existing building, so 
to be more profitable to the Было добавлено еще два новых этажа существующих. Another example. This is more modern. Более современный проект жилого дома. But also considered the reconstruction of some parts of the building. С реконструкцией, то есть элементами реконструкции старого дома. And now we go to some resorts and hotel projects. So this is a master plan of a resort in Portugal, which is a golf course with residential uh, areas, touristic ones, and uh, uh, some commercial, small commercial areas to support this residential area. The complex uh, is, uh, uh, is this is one example in Astana. It's a mixed-use uh, building which has uh, a residential uh, office and a hotel. Uh, this uh, only becomes a place. Is it approved? It was approved by the Department of Architecture, so uh, there is a permission to continue the, first, the second phase, but it's a question of uh, investment from the part of the client, so he's raising some investment. This is uh, one example in uh, Bahrain, it's a, a boutique hotel. Um, one example in uh, Russia, uh, also a uh, concept. This is one hotel with uh, from rehabilitation as well, so an old building that was converted in hotel uh, in Lisbon, Portugal. Значит, этот отель был также реконструирован в Лиссабоне, в Португалии. Another example of hotel, uh, and here we have also uh, an example of interior design. So in this project, it, it was uh, uh, worked together from the architecture team and the interior design team. Значит, это пример дизайна интерьера. Значит, это фасад и интерьерный Another example, uh, one rural building converted into a hotel, and the one image of the interior that was developed by our company. So, uh, and now we go to um, sports and leisure buildings. So we have this example of uh, the Taras uh, boxing complex. Uh, in Kazakhstan, it's a, it was a concept that you developed. Значит, этот проект был разработан компанией расположение Тарас, Казахстан. Another example in Kazakhstan, uh, which we developed in concept phase for Basis, which is the company that at the end constructed the final uh, object, the final project, uh, which was a mix of several concepts. So the building that is there in Astana have in fact some references of this concept, though not being this particular project. Uh, one uh, stadium in Niagara, Nicaragua, sorry. Stadion Nicaragua. And our proposal for the Ice Palace in Almaty. Наше предложение, проект для ледового бокса в Алматы. And now some examples of office. Uh, I have следующий like... сектор офиса. So this is the headquarters of Fortivan in Astana. It was our first uh, built project. It's a great landmark uh, 
uh, in the city because uh, it really stands out for the difference in the quality of finishings. Uh, we follow construction as well, so we do technical assistance during construction, and uh, I'm very proud of this building. <laughs> Это uh, законченный проект по Монтри и это uh, головной офис Форта Банка. Uh, один из тех проектов, которые были разработаны, которые сейчас служат ориентиром, хорошим ориентиром в городе. И uh, Светлана очень гордится этим проектом. Another office building, which might look sometimes strange uh, to explain a little bit, because it's connected to what I will present at the end of this presentation. It's an office building in Portugal, in a location where it is very hot, like in the <laughs> in the summer. Uh, uh, so, and then the, the strategy, this is not so big a project, it's uh, 1,000 square meters about, uh, and in fact the building is all glass, but then has the second skin, which provides <clears throat> the shade, the protection from the sun, so during the summer, uh, the occupants of this building, the workers from this company, which is Tagus Gash, they don't need to have the air conditioning uh, turned on all day, or even in some days they don't need it, because the, the strategies that were taken in consideration during the project allowed to, uh, to have, as a result, a very efficient building. Uh, other techniques, maybe you, you need to translate it first. <coughs> Этот, uh, это здание, которое которому, может очень немного странно выглядеть, это офис для uh, мест, то есть для регионов с жарким климатом, например, как Узбекистан. Uh, и особенность этого здания в том, что летом, когда очень жарко, uh, сотрудники этого офиса они имеют возможность не включать кондиционер и при этом uh, находиться в охлаждаемом помещении. So some other strategies were taken into consideration not only regarding energy, but regarding uh, water saving, the comfort of the people uh, in what regards uh, natural lighting, natural ventilation, the shoes and the, the shoes of the materials uh, with the non-emitting um, uh, compounds, uh, um, um, volatic compounds uh, in the materials, uh, and the promotion of uh, mobility. So uh, there is changing facilities with lockers, uh, with shower uh, to allow uh, people that come, for example, by bicycle, where we also provided um, parking places for bicycles with, with security, uh, so that they can take a shower after the, the ride by bicycle and go to to the office. This is an office in a business park, uh, business um, um, part of the city, which is not so close to the center. So, but the um, the weather in Portugal is, is good to, to go by bicycle, but it's not so cold in the winter. So people can come and they do uh, actually uh, use uh, this uh, mean of transportation. This building was built not in the center of the city, but in the part where there are other business offices. And in the construction of such buildings, they are very careful uh, обращать внимание на использование экологических uh, продуктов, uh, а также uh, продумывать такие техники, в которых uh, использование воды, uh, энергоресурсов, они значительно уменьшаются. Uh, также в этом здании uh, продуманные места для uh, велосипедистов, которые могут uh, uh, приехать и оставить на велосипеде парковки, пойти принять душ. Uh, и дальше продолжать, продолжать рабочий день. То есть он очень uh, продуман в плане тех людей, которые любят мобильность, uh, передвижение и, uh, и комфорт. Our office building is one big one. It's the judiciary police headquarters uh, from the, the country, Portugal, which is located in Lisbon. It's also a very specific uh, type of architecture. <coughs> the Justice Campus in Lisbon, so it's where the, all the courts and the lawyers are located right now, the part of the city. Это кампус, скажем так, бизнес-сети, да? Суды, министерства, юристы, адвокаты, то есть они находятся на этих территориях. And 
and now we go to um, the field of uh, uh, healthcare projects, which is one of our good uh, um, expertise, let's say, because healthcare projects are very specific, and uh, instead of uh, starting the connection between the facade, the beautiful building, and the interior at the same time, in healthcare projects we need to start with high functionality. Only after all the puzzle inside is working, we can go and do uh, the, the part we like the most, which is making the beauty, the beauty in, the, in, the, in the object. Сейчас переходим на следующий, следующий сектор здравоохранения. Это один из тех секторов, в котором мы очень сильны и имеем определенный багаж, хороший багаж опыт работы. Так как здесь нужно учитывать больше не внешние компоненты, внешнюю атрибутику, а больше функциональность, то есть исходим из внутри, то есть исходя из того, что нужно, чем нужно наполнять здание, нежели чем акцентировать на том, как оно должно выглядеть. То есть приоритет больше на функциональности, нежели на внешности. So our special team for this kind of projects uh, is able to provide all, uh, serve all um, stages of services necessary from the programming, the functional uh, the program until the, the detailed design. Специалист в нашей команде, он занимается тем, что сначала разрабатывает проект на стадии планирования, расчетов, то есть начальные этапы осуществления такого проекта очень продумываются специалистом, который этим готов в этом направлении. This is the project we are developing now in, uh, in Astana. It's the National Research Ecologic Center, uh, which is in uh, uh, already starting detailed design phase. Uh, so the, um, the design will be finished, hopefully, uh, in December this year, and the construction is planned to be during three years. Этот проект, которым мы сейчас занимаемся в Астане, это онкологический исследовательский центр. Дизайн этого проекта будет завершен в декабре этого года, а строительство планируется завершить через три года. Another example, this is a built hospital in Lisbon, also with a big size, so 166 1,000 square meters with 427 beds. So it was very, very uh, hard project, and it's uh, built from 2011, and it's uh, considered a benchmark uh, in the hospital healthcare uh, uh, area of project. It is еще один завершенный проект в Португалии в Лиссабоне на 166 квадратных метров, 427 кубика мест. Uh, очень большой проект, который завершен и является какой-то точкой uh, начала uh, проекта в этом секторе для компании SME. Another built hospital, in this case Algeria, in uh, Albert. Uh, еще один uh, проект по здравоохранению в Алжире. Алжире. Another project in Algeria, this one under construction. Этот проект Алжири он еще не совершен. And one concept uh, we did for another region in Portugal, uh, which is uh, just a different uh, example that I wanted to show. And now we go to human uh, planning. So this is an example of human planning we did in Villamora and. I think I will speed up the little bit because there is still some slides. Значит, переходим на проект градостроительства, один из проектов в Беломоре, Португалии. Будем успеть отключить слайды. This was a proposal of a master plan for a so-called green quarter in Astana. Этот проект зеленого квартала. Да, в Астане, 
electricity or water from the outside and from our calculations and our specialty from Green Lab, we achieved uh, the goals with, uh, with this project, though it was a concept uh, that uh, at the end is not the one that is uh, being built. Мы еще не уверены, что мы строим этот проект, но в этом проекте учтены нюансы, чтобы этот квартал был самообеспеченным, то есть чтобы не было нужды на электричестве, воде, то есть он еще был зависим от остальных инфраструктур. Our own proposal for Expo 2017 in Astana, which also had requirements very high for sustainability. Еще один проект для Expo 2017 в Астане, в котором также представлены очень большие требования для автономности, то есть самообеспеченности этого региона. This project was the reason why I came to Kazakhstan, by the way. Из этого проекта я приехала работать в Казахстан. And another uh, proposal we did to continue in Russia. Uh, minimum, uh, Russia. So some words of interior design. This is a sushi uh, restaurant uh, in Astana. This is just a uh, sorry, yes. <laughs> I, I have Astana in my head. <laughs> oh, Portugal. Uh, food court in Lisbon. Food court in Lisbon. Uh, food court in a mall. It's a special mall. It's a commercial center. Uh -huh. Commercial center. Um, this is an hotel. The interior of an hotel in Portugal. Uh, interior hotel in Lisbon. This is Ponta da Gada. Is one of our Ponta da Gada. <laughs> And another hotel, this one in Switzerland. Hotel Shutari. Concept design. So, toilet design. Concept design, it's not so much about the architecture, but for example, exhibitions. This is our project of Kazatom Prom Pavilion in Expo, which was built, and these are photos and not rendered. Здесь больше не имеет значения не архитектура, а концептуальная проработка архитектурных моментов. Здесь клиентом этого проекта был Казатом Про. Another project in Expo 2017, KTG, another national company in Kazakhstan. клиентом в Expo 2017. And some look energy. И сам Рука Энерджи. Also in Expo. Expo 17. And this is another project where, where uh, concept design team uh, was involved. And it is the monument of the 25th anniversary of the independence of Kazakhstan, which was an international competition. And we won the third prize in this competition. В Казахстане 25 лет независимости был организован конкурс, в котором СНД выиграли третье место с данным проектом. Green Lab. So in Green Lab uh, we have a team of uh, technical specialists, consultants, mostly engineers and architects, but uh, connected with the bioclimatic architecture. В проекте Green Lab у нас есть архитекторы, инженера, которые изучают именно биохимические процессы и предлагают соответствующие проекты. And Green Lab acts in four different spheres: sustainability in construction, sustainability in urban environment, sustainability in products, and sustainable energy. Green Lab предлагает четыре проекта. Sustainability, мы понимаем в этом слове долгосрочные издания, которые будут... Устойчивые развития. Устойчивые, как бы скажем, проекты в... Sustainability in construction. Строительство. Meaning ecology in buildings, ecology in urban context, ecology in products. And ecology in energy. 
То есть, да, экологичные проекты в строительстве, в планировании продуктов и так далее. And I will go, so this is just a scheme to explain uh, the goals. In urban context, we go from smart city strategies until the local agenda 21. This is uh, a pact between uh, several countries to achieve sustainability in the cities. То есть это проекты умных городов, в которых планируется достигнуть таких экологических Um, um, sustainability in product. Basically, uh, we have uh, tools to assess uh, the life cycle assessment, to assess the life cycle of the product or of, of a material in order to get uh, a certain declaration or a certification of materials. Uh, Экологичные продукты необходимо сделать uh, оценку жизненного цикла определенных, uh, определенных компонентов. Uh, для этого нужны декларации, то есть определенные процессы, и все это uh, тоже проделывается. And energy. Basically, we can support on choosing the best strategies and implementing uh, solar panel or farms to produce energy or uh, other types of uh, sustainable energy in cities or in houses. Также для экологичных проектов учитывается такой ресурс, как энергия и солнечные панели, экологичные города, фермы. То есть все продумывается, используя эти техники. Well, maybe I will ask if someone wants to do a stop or if we can continue to the end. Um, what specific, which specific information would you like to deliver? So now we will, uh, I will explain the advantages of the uh, uh, the sustainability strategies on a project, which can lead to a certification uh, of a building. Я бы хотела объяснить процесс сертификации, который приводит к экологичному проекту, к экологичному строительству. So, continue. Okay, uh, three main reasons why to use sustainability strategies or to get a certification. This can lead to reduction of operation costs. Uh, it will certainly improve the comfort and the air quality of uh, the inside of the building, and ultimately, uh, it's good for environment. Three main reasons why the project is proposed. First, the operation of постоянных расходов, увеличение качества воздуха внутри дома, наружу дома, и, конечно же, сокращение, то есть выброс, да, то есть экологический, то есть сокращение этого фактора тоже. These are some figures uh, according to studies, specific studies that have been made. So just to highlight, for example, uh, the reduction of operation costs can reach until 76% according to the results of this study. Uh, the, uh, the value of the building in the moment of the sale can increase 38% because of the recognition of the certain certification. And the, um, the rent of... Uh, of, of those apartments in the building, for example, can also be higher about 7 percent квартиры в этом жилом здании, то стоимость аренды повышается на 
what is the impact um, and so on. <laughs> and, uh, and another, from another study, uh, the rents can be higher in case of uh, renovation, uh, can, in, uh, can increase 1% when compared to conventional buildings, but if we talk about new buildings, can increase 6.1%. Here it should be 10, 10 years, not 12 years. Uh, another example of figures, so this is uh, taking consideration one specific type of certification, lead. So comparing the, the levels of, of uh, achieving the rate in this certification, a LEED certified building uh, can have a reduction of uh, energy use uh, about 18% uh, less, but a LEED goal, which is more demanding in terms of requirements <coughs> to achieve the certification, can reach about 35% 30, of reduction of the energy costs. You can see it clean. You can see it. It's the brand. Значит, согласно сертификации LEED, значит, LEED Gold имеет 30% сокращения энергии, да? По сравнению с тем, что мы имеем уже, то есть по сравнению с тем зданием, которое мы имеем. А Lead Silver имеет, а, то есть, извините, 35 и 30. Another type of figures concerning the comfort and the um, air quality inside the buildings. So, for example, it's, um, to have more views to, to the outside, increase the mental function and memory, uh, the call processing can be faster, so this is good, it's more profitable for uh, the business of call centers, for example. In hospitals, the patients uh, are uh, feeling better uh, uh, more uh, rapidly, so the stays in hospital can decrease 80%. Uh, for example, in, in stores, with that daylight, the sales can increase just because of the daylight, uh, and the, the fact that the systems can uh, can be um, adapted by the user can also uh, increase productivity um, in, in terms of the, the occupants of the building. <laughs> нахождение определенных, скажем так, пациентов или студентов или же сотрудников, скажем, колл-центра, насколько они получают определенные, скажем, выгоды, находясь в таких зданиях. Например, сотрудники, то есть, скажем так, функционал мозга увеличивается на 10, 15, 25 процентов. Сотрудники колл-центра обычно работают на 16 процентов. Пациенты в госпитале, значит, их длительность нахождения в госпитале сокращается на 8-5%. Студенты получают более высокие результаты в стадии и так далее. So, and now just to go fast the question is, uh, uh, who uh, studied, who, who did those research, these uh, the numbers? This study, this study is also according to uh, this uh, WGB PC 2013. If there is a report with all, all, all of these numbers, if somebody then uh, uh, is interested, I can share the more information. The detail must be put for sure, the study is more detailed information. Not studies from our own, it's uh, independent yeah, it's studies. Uh, uh, no, the studies are public studies. We are just uh, sharing the numbers to, to make understand the, the importance of using 
sustainable strategies in the projects. In all the projects we made in Saraiva, from the scratch, there is always some uh, strategies applied. Then the, the level of uh, accomplishment, accomplishment of requirements depends if we will follow certification or not, which requires a certain service which is the, uh, the commercial part of our job. Uh, it is clear that we have been doing near company SLA, but it is clear that we have been able to get the certification that can allow us to complete these projects. Also, uh, this is important. The services from uh, Green Lab uh, department, let's say, of our company, they are uh, a department inside the company to, to connect with the architecture, but also to provide services outside. We can provide services, consultancy service in this area, to other architects, other companies, other projects, uh, together with clients. So it's a, a separate company, let's say, that is independent. Green Lab также предоставляет консультации архитекторам, new компаниям для того, чтобы осуществлять такие проекты. То есть иногда они могут их не осуществлять, а просто предоставлять консультации. So Green and Lead are the two uh, more, uh, most well-known systems uh, in the world to uh, certificate green buildings. Компания Brim и Lead две большие компании, которые занимаются изменением. Это не компания, это система. Система. It's like institutes. They are third party institutes. То есть, спасибо, меня поправили. Это наша система, которые занимаются сертификацией зеленых зданий. So difference between Green and Leaf. Green uh, is from UK. Uh, it was the first uh, uh, system of certification developed in uh, uh, in the 90s. Nowadays, it's used in 77 countries. It has already 500, about 500 uh, buildings certif uh, certified around the world, and about two million projects registered for certification, which means that they are under process to achieve. Brim происходит, то есть система Brim, она основана в Великобритании, используется в 77 странах, сертифицировано уже больше 500 тысяч проектов, и больше 2 миллионов проектов находятся, то есть они зарегистрированы и ожидают сертификации. These are the categories of analysis of a project and the building. So from the, the energy part, the water, the transport, so the, the mobility part, uh, the waste uh, and the specific weight of each category to uh, achieve points. So we analyze the project in these categories and the points we achieve in each one of them at the end will be weighted and in terms of these uh, percentages. Значит, BIM распределяет вот эти категории по определенным, имеет отдельный вес каждому, скажем так, каждому сектору, каждому направлению. И при планировании проекта в завершающей стадии, опять-таки же, проверяйте, насколько соответствует тот, скажем так, процент тем стандартам, которые создаются изначально. These are uh, when weighted the points earned in each category, we reach a final score, which represents a level of certification. There is a minimum to achieve certification, so 29% doesn't mean anything. If we have 30%, then we have the minimum uh, to, to have a, certifi a certificate. And the outstanding, which is uh, something very good, very great. And every category, which was on the previous slide, is assessed by the following rating. So, 29 is not a good rating. It's very unfortunate. It starts at 30% to 85. It's the rating that they are assessing. So, this is the examples of the certificate. That uh, is a result of, of uh, the assessment. In the case of green, there are two uh, stages of certificate. 
the one from the project, which says that the project is going in a good direction, and the final certificate only uh, issued only after the construction is finished, where we will uh, check if everything was uh, uh, followed or not. Doesn't mean that the interim certificate will be exactly the, the same. It can be higher or less, because basically everything needs to be assessed again. Uh, выдаются по э, процессу построения проекта, то есть вот этот первый, он э, проверяется, то есть вот этот третий, он э, выдается э, в течение, то есть в процессе строительства, а завершающий э, выдается уже в конце, в завершении э, проекта и провер... еще раз проходит проверку. These are the examples of the plates that can be put in the entrance of the building. Uh, это, uh, значит, uh, такие uh, таблички, которые вывешиваются, если проект uh, проходит сертификацию. And now lead, the other system. Теперь uh, поговорим про лид, uh, альтернативную систему. So this system is American, was developed uh, uh, in the 20, uh, in, in 2000, and uh, because lead has a better marketing tool, let's say, it's used in 162 countries, so it is used widely, <laughs> though the number of uh, projects that are in fact certified is less. Система LEAD is American, and thanks to more expensive marketing instruments, it is more expensive. It is used in 162 countries, но меньше количество сертифицированных проектов, чем в And so the similar, it's similar. There is a, a different number of categories. Here we have eight categories. The weighting is different as well. So in lead they give more attention to the energy part, whereas in green we had more attention in the uh, the health and well-being inside of the building. Uh, and so this is what can help us to choose what system to follow uh, in our projects, or the clients. Виде тоже есть определенные категории, которые они рассматривают. Они немного отличаются от Брима. Здесь, значит, основной момент учитывается энергия и энергоэффективность. Тогда как в Бриме больше акцент делается на здоровье, на, скажем так, экологичную атмосферу, нежели чем один конкретный компонент. Here we have four levels, so from certified to platinum. Лида четыре, значит, да, вид оценки, начиная с серебра, заканчивая платиной. The certificates uh, are like this, so it's also the paper we receive and we can put on the wall. Also another big difference in LEED, we only have certificates, uh, the certification at the end of construction. There is no certification of project. So only when we finish the certification, we have to uh, finish the building, sorry, we have the certification. That's why also there is less amount of projects. Uh, Примеры сертификатов системы МИЛИ. В отличие от системы БРИМ, у МИЛИДА нет промежуточного сертификата. То есть выдается только один сертификат за решение проекта, а промежуточного МИЛИДА не бывает. And the examples of the plates from the lead system, which can be... Примеры таблички. Each material we want. In gold, in glass, in diamonds. Uh, они производятся в том материале, в котором мы uh, ну, попросим золото, платина, сыр, сыр, So, uh, what, what, what is something that inspires you? Uh, 
uh, I don't know yet. That's why I want to, to listen to you, because it's my first time in uh, Uzbekistan. It's my third day in Tashkent. I'm planning to go to uh, Samarkand tomorrow, uh, because it's uh, one of the most interesting cities in the world that I've heard. I want to see by my, uh, by my eyes. And I wanted to see Uzbek uh, country and uh, market by my eyes as well. So, but I'm an explorer. I'm here for the first time. I don't know uh, what kind of project would be um, would make sense here for our company. Uh, so that's why I would like to to hear your opinion, your expectations, and your view to the future of uh, uh, respect. What do you mean? To explore the market. It's the opposite. I'm visiting some uh, potential clients and I will give some proposals as I was asked already. Uh, but I'm still uh, very young in the market, let's say, and I need to study and go further. Yes, I'm country manager of our company in uh, Kazakhstan. So your so your vision is to work. So uh, my function as a country manager, aside from uh, managing the projects which are happening in Kazakhstan, is also, of course, to uh, to do business development. So at this point, and because I have friends from Uzbekistan in Kazakhstan. And I always heard good things about Uzbekistan. And now Uzbekistan is opening the market. So I wanted to come here. And it's very exciting. I heard that. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I'm doing the connection between the client and our team. In fact, I'm not doing architecture anymore. <laughs> I'm doing management. Hmm? In our office, we have four architects right now that are communicating with our main production in Lisbon. But the number of architects in our local team depends on the amount of projects we have. And also, another thing which is uh, important, we always have a connection with the local company. Uh, for adaptation of the project, for example, because we have local regulation, which is uh, very specific. Our workers, of course, they know how to work with that, but then there is companies that are in the market, uh, local companies that have much more experience, and usually we take a partner for a specific project, um, and it's the way that we have been doing to have success, in fact. And about the materials, construction materials, finished, everything is from the it depends on each project, but in fact, we need to have a higher percentage of local materials as per the regulations. So this is a work that uh, we uh, do at the project phase, but then we work together with the construction team because we do only do design, we don't construct. So in the construction team, uh, we support choosing the right solution that responds to the aesthetic uh, uh, result we want, but uh, in terms of price and uh, uh, type of material, the construction is the one who's, uh, who's choosing. We are just approving or not approving in concerns with what we chose uh, uh, to the project. So in the project, we give get references of materials, the look of material, and if in the market there is something similar that do the same uh, result. We don't care if it is uh, uh, Uzbek, Kazakh, Turkish. Uh, so this will be a decision of the contractor, which has to comply with the regulations anyway. And uh, like, are your architects working in the DIS system, which is the Yes. In fact, the, the Hawk Hospital, the National Oncology Center, will be the first uh, project in Kazakhstan, fully developed in BIM. So our team uh, nowadays is working 
uh, all in being. In this project, all the specialities, because we do only the architecture part, there is another team for MEP, another for structure, etc. And all of uh, the teams in this specific project are working in BIM and in a platform to work together in the same model, which if you, if you know uh, BIM, it's uh, very challenging. Uh, and this will be the first uh, project fully, fully developed in BIM in Kazakhstan. I don't know if you expect things already sp uh, spread this system. Can you just spread it for that? Yes, we have spread it because it's Autodesk. Autodesk is monopolizing the, the, the architecture field. Uh, myself, I was using previously um, uh, Archicad, which I like more, or Archicad, as you say here, yes. Uh, but uh, Autodesk, yes, when it's. Uh, <laughs> what, what's just the deadline for the project? Like uh, the headquarters office that you're on? What was the time uh, for the project? The Forty Bank headquarters? The main, the main design work. So like this, from the conceptual stage, from scratch, until the technical drawing submission? That, uh, that project was in fact uh, very fast in terms of design and also construction. So in uh, about uh, uh, six months we had all the process of design and the construction started before we finished the Rabochny project. So it was only about one year of construction. Uh, so it, it, it's in fact a, quite an achievement for that case. And the materials on that are more like from the, the constructor. The, the contractor was Serbian company, so they had managed to import some Serbian materials, uh, but there are also a lot of uh, local sourced uh, products because they need to comply also with regulations. But we were approving all the solutions. Uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, the aesthetic, the, the design we provide, the, the final result that we wanted, so uh, we had to approve all the materials uh, if, if we're complying or not. And a uh, historical context, like doing the research in a design process, do you consider this kind of uh, Sorry, I didn't like that. I mean, the research in a, in a design process like researching the context of the building of the building site of like course. that and then making the connections of all the environment there and also using some kind of... Of course, this is part of the sustainability strategies. Always taking consideration the, the, the surroundings of the building where we, uh, which we will do. Uh, because uh, cities must be done like this. And some like one office or two was like the in culture, you know, in Portugal, in, the, in your hot area, it was the building which covered envelope with the, this patterns, mm -hmm. like making the sheets and so on. But it's like, it's no window, so to say, to access the entire location of the environment. Uh, How in do you consider the, like the courtyard systems, the courtyard exactly. the glass? Like, it was like more solid, only covered the surface. In, uh, well, the presentation only showed one picture. The, we didn't have so many uh, <coughs> slides to show everything in no time. But that uh, building has a courtyard, exactly. So being all glass, the, the, the exterior is covered with this uh, second scheme, but the courtyard is not covered. So there is also a lot of uh, daylighting coming up. And because it's only one company, uh, and they choose to have um, uh, open space uh, working places, the light is coming from everywhere. Another thing, these panels, uh, the, the shape, uh, the pattern that is on the panels was designed by us. So we created like four different types and then uh, played with the different uh, rotation and location. Uh, and this was studied in order to, from inside when you look you really see the, the outside because it's about perspective and the distance if you are close to a panel maybe you just see maybe you just see the uh, the circles but when you are far you can see uh, the surroundings and they, the the natural light is coming inside from these holes but also from the patio that we developed for that purpose mainly your projects are about the light 
more likely to be general sum function, like pi is about some commercial unit that we can that for. And I mean, the question is about the social interaction between the species which are, which can be modified, which can be flexible living environments that can have, that can have multiple functions and, and could be changed in the time, like, Definitely. As, the, as the needs are there. Definitely another um, strategy that must be considered in sustainability is the flexibility. The, um, the possibility of changing in the future the space, it's a reduction of costs as well. So uh, this must be taken into consideration. And we, we try to take this as much as possible into consideration, but as you know, and I believe you are architects, uh, sometimes depends on our clients and we need to work with them and convince them. It's our role as architects to, to teach our clients as well about uh, what is really architecture because we are not just uh, someone that do a sketch as they want. We have knowledge that needs to be put into practice and sometimes they take time to pass this idea uh, but, um, but time and, uh, is changing. I believe. The last one, I just wanted to say that we have a lot of offices throughout the world. So the main challenge is the cultural identification, like the, making the architecture which belongs to that country that's based in that area. Exactly. What are the main characteristics when you design? Right? What do you consider as the cultural identity of your design? Is your designs are mostly like the high-tech, yeah. complete certificated projects, but what is the... So, uh, the, the reason why we have local teams is to get insights, though the insights is not to copy local projects. We still have our own identity as architects, so you can recognize more, more or less our line of architecture, but in small details, in um, uh, simple things, we try to implement um, cultural characteristics. Uh, for example, in the hospital uh, of Astana, we are, um, and this is something connected with the functionality and the comfort of the patients inside the building. All the roofs, because there is different levels of buildings, only the, the highest building doesn't have a, treat, a special treatment on the roof, but all the other roofs have a, a special treatment to be nice uh, when the patients are walking outside, because they are in very bad shape. It's a, uh, a very uh, serious disease, and uh, they, they need something to help them to recover. And in this case, Astana, uh, with our local architects, we were trying to find uh, specific uh, specifics of the culture that could be used for this purpose. So that's why the the, um, the roofs have these shapes that are uh, characteristics from uh, um, the, the uh, Kazakhstan, uh, and also the facade of the building, which in this scale is not possible to see. But there will be some uh, um, um, relief. Uh, on, on the on the facade material with these uh, motifs, uh, cultural motifs, local motifs as well. Thank you. that we should uh, do also the technical support during construction uh, for their own uh, benefit as well. When our client is the, the, the final, the owner of the building, sometimes our client is the, the contractor, the constructor, the, the, the company that will develop the, the building. 
there is no recipe for that, <laughs> in fact, because each culture is different, each company is different, so we try uh, to our best to, to follow the project and even if they don't hire us to, to follow the project, we, we try to help the clients because it's our name at the end, uh, because we present the project as ours and uh, we would like to have the, the
possible clients. It was only in the in the company's uh, level. So how was the deal? Sorry. How uh, how, how was what kind of agreements you have at the end? The acceptance was very good, so uh, I received already some requests to present our proposal, so I believe it's a, it's a good achievement, it's some result, but I don't know any, uh, yet what will be the final result, if they will accept my proposal or not, if they will accept my price or not. So, I will see. Wish me luck. Okay. <laughs> and the third question is about uh, Ah, what, what was the main problems which you had with your customers over there in uh, all over the world and exactly in Kazakhstan in our region? Usually customers don't like to pay. What kind of mistakes did you make in Kazakhstan? Mistakes? Yeah. I think all sort of mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Mistakes. I know all companies make mistakes as well. Any so challenges? Challenges, yeah. Let me find some example. I don't know, all, all sort of things like uh, trying to impose something, some line with your client that at the end we didn't, we didn't understand well the client at the beginning and then we learned with a mistake. And, uh, we didn't do it again. Uh, uh, <coughs> this kind of uh, thing. Well, I'm not <laughs> remembering any specific now. I'm sorry. If it's not a secret, could you tell me which companies you have contact with like, here in Uzbeks? In the local? Uh, well, I had contact with some. Which doesn't have exactly a company, uh, and uh, I was in some uh, construction company. Uh, but I will tell you the names after, if you don't mind. <laughs> How about the price? Is the company is it expensive to order you a project, or are you? How would you in the world market, let's say? This is an interesting question because. Uh, because you said about the pay, like, yeah. I don't like yeah. to pay, so maybe it's expensive, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a problem everywhere in every sector, I believe. Nobody likes when it's the moment to, to take out the, the notes from the wall. But uh, in, um, so I refer, we need to adapt in each market where, where we are. That's why we are in 13 different countries. So the price of, uh, of a project depends on the type of project. First, firstly, the complexity of the project, because to do 100 square meters of housing, it's not the same of 100 square meters of an hospital. It's completely different, so we cannot compare. And we cannot say that an architecture project costs something by square meter. This depends, depends on the market to find the complexity, uh, the program of the, the, the project. So. When the client comes to us and asks some uh, object that he wants this, this, and this, it's a, a certain level of complexity that we need to analyze to make our price. So, in our company, we never say a price like this. We need to analyze and think uh, well about it. Individual cases, right? Individual cases for all of us. And also, how do you try to the copyrights? So let's say you offer your uh, say vision for a project, right? This uh, is Okay, I know where you want to get. <laughs> this is another question, another interesting thing. Uh, almost uh, all the concepts I showed you, they were in fact paid concepts. So we didn't offer them unless in some very um, in important competition where you need to show your name. But uh, most of the competitions where we go, we are invited to participate. And so there is a contract where physically they pay the rights to have our concept. That's why I told, for example, the, one of the concepts we did for Asana, uh, not yet for the, the Vale uh, building. Uh, the final object is not our project, but we can see some, some references of our project there. But in fact, they, they paid the... Uh, 
the rights of using part of it. Since they don't use all, uh, it's okay. So it's, it, I think I answered your question. We try always to, um, to be paid by uh, for our concepts because the concept is the, the mind part of an architect. It's the first part. So if we are doing it for free, what, what are we? Okay. It's not like selling bananas. Architecture is something that requires a lot of uh, study, a lot of uh, um, some uh, uh, expertise and, and uh, um, compromise. Any more questions? I have a question concerning design. For example, uh, let's imagine that we have already engaged with our serious clients. I mean, one of And uh, what, how, how do you work uh, in general? Do you impose your own style, or do you listen to clients' desire, or do you do something in confidence? Uh, I mean, uh, imposing your own view, respecting clients' desire. Exactly. There must be always a compromise. Uh, being an international company, which is already recognized uh, worldwide, we have our own line. So we like to kind of impose our design. That's why the client chose us. He saw our portfolio, like our style. So if he likes our style, we will do something in our style. Of course, that's then we need to listen to our client. Also, another thing very important, every, each project is unique. We never do the same project twice. So, so we have a line that we adapt our line to the needs of the client. When the client requests something that is completely out of what we could do, we, we don't do it. We try to convince him uh, to go in the direction we, uh, we prefer. Otherwise, uh, it never happened, in fact, that we uh, gave up from a project because of the, that reason, because we find always the, the explanation to say why this is better than that. Because it's not only, of course, there is the, the aesthetics, but the aesthetics, the aesthetics follow the function. So there is a reason to do that. Uh, one of the reasons, for example, very clear, uh, rounded buildings, uh, spheres and circles are always more expensive than uh, horizontal ones. So this is always a good argument for our clients. Yes. And uh, if you will travel around the place, you will see in old buildings, or also the buildings in new buildings which are not constructed, they keep using the same styles for before, like art or optical shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you do if uh, somebody asks you to design? How would you, would you also respect people's habits, <laughs> their culture, we must respect climate, it's very important to the shape of the building. And we must respect habits and culture. Uh, but we need to evolve. It was the same in Kazakhstan when we arrived. Uh, it was not easy to, uh, to change the, the way of doing uh, buildings. But they are changing and we did already uh, different buildings and they are not like in Dubai. So there is a, 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 an identification of, uh, of the, the local context. That building, for the bank, is in the, the, the new part of the city. So that's why it's all in glass. And because it's, in fact, also surrounding by, uh, surrounded already by all these uh, glass buildings. Uh, but still, uh, we kept something very important. In that building, there was an existing structure uh, that we recuperated 80%. So the existing building, uh, the existing structure, and, uh, and to have that uh, final shape. So it was cheaper for the client, we recuperated, so it was sustainable as well, and the final result is uh, pleasant for everybody. And, uh, I, I, I just give this question because uh, it happens, I think, often uh, when the 
client's desires really reflect what need from people, what need their habits, climate, or desires, or something, uh, what happens in the city. But I usually notice uh, some buildings which are but this is our oh, response suite uh, that's yes. entertainment. This and is our responsibility as our clients. How do you discuss if a client wants one and uh, but the city needs another thing? How do you uh, give your ideas and how do you impose it? Uh, ultimately, it will not be profitable for him if people will not like it, if it is a housing. Uh, uh, a residential building, people will not buy the apartments if they feel that they don't make sense. So we try to uh, give this information to our client, to, uh, to teach him, to, it's our responsibility to, to give the reason to, to, uh, to the project. So the project must follow the needs of people because houses are made for people living inside. That's good. And uh, also, you have already given the answer to my friend uh, that you do just design and you don't participate in the phases of construction. Exactly. We only but we do design, architecture design, though we can uh, we don't do engineering, though we have several companies uh, which work with us like partners. So in Portugal we have two or three companies with whom we always work and we choose the company uh, depending the complexity of the project because we know uh, how they work. In Kazakhstan, we have also some companies uh, with whom we work, uh, worked already for the projects we did. So we don't do it in our uh, own facilities. It's not our project, but we can provide the client the project, the complete project with our partners. So uh, we are flex flexible also in this matter. But we don't participate in construction. And uh, do you keep control of choosing materials? I mean. Uh, even to the pattern of the exterior or interior. Do you check everything that happens during construction? We try to. As it goes like uh, expectation and reality. We try to, and sometimes we need to accept it's a compromise. Uh, when uh, when the, the type of aesthetics which we choose, because sometimes happen, at the end results in a very expensive material, and the client has been the one who is paying the, the, the construction, he says, no, no way. Okay, we have to choose another thing that would fit uh, the budget together with the aesthetic which we, we would accept. So we try always to find an alternative. If the one we prefer is not suitable, we try to find alternatives until the client says, okay, this one is okay. And do you have the right to give comments if something goes wrong? Like they chose this uh, another or, or this depends on the, the, the panel. This depends on the contract we uh, reach with the client, but uh, in theory we should be because we are authors of the project. So uh, at the end, what can happen is that the Osraiva will say to our client, "I will not sign this. You cannot say that this is mine." Uh, 
are the, the, the entities that certify, but the systems can be used during the project uh, in order to uh, reach uh, those goals. In Saraiva's um, way of working, uh, our projects will not be certified just per se. Uh, our projects have some of these strategies uh, um, included since the beginning because it's, our goal is to have our projects always sustainable. But uh, the team of Green Lab is uh, independent. Uh, it's an independent uh, team that can support other projects of our or our projects when the client requires a certification. And, and, and so in this case, during the project, the team of Inma will be working with the team of architects, checking all these areas to reach uh, the requirements. It's like the legislation, but in this case, it's a independent legislation. Uh, and so this is a service, uh, uh, extra service that can be provided. During uh, the certificates to be done after construction, this is the service as well of this team that uh, will assess the project and the changes on the project during construction and uh, the following of construction, which is different from the technical system of the project. So it's two different uh, services, two different words. Architecture, and then there is this uh, extra service that could be the assessment to reach the certification. So, uh, I don't know if I was clear enough. It's uh, yes, for time, uh, so that you just for getting certification. Uh, we are responsible. Design, just design. That's no, what. during construction as well. Uh, meaning that uh, if we are... Um, uh, contracted, if, I, if the client wants to get the certification, we will be going to the construction site. We, no, no, sorry, not we, the, special, the specific team of Green Lab, which will be assigned for a, for a project, will go following the construction and uh, the contractor will be obliged to give all the information that this assessor requires. So these uh, people, uh, these technicians we have in our team, they are qualified assessors or qualified professionals uh, to follow this uh, kind of system in the project. So only qualified people can do it. It's like architecture can be done all, only by architects. Uh, but it's not a good as an example because <laughs> sometimes it's not what happens. But uh, uh, only qualified uh, technic uh, techniques that have a specific uh, uh, training on those systems can do this or are able to do this. So at the end there is a report of this person uh, that goes to the system and then the system check the, uh, the system, the, this institute, they check uh, uh, the reports and if everything is clear enough, because sometimes they have questions, they send the reports back and say, mm, something here is not clear, explain me better. And then we need to apply again until uh, they are convinced and, okay, they reach, uh, they uh, issue the certificate with the level that is re referred on the report that this technical uh, person does. Okay. First of all, thank you to come and share your information. Uh, my question is, uh, how many of your customers' opinion or idea you will use during uh, making his or her project. Uh, sorry, how many? Uh, percentage of opinion or idea about his or her uh, building or project you will use during making his I cannot quantify because it depends on the, the ideas that will be given. If they are complete, I cannot use them, so I can use zero percent. <coughs> but if they are no, let's imagine, uh, it's, uh, we'll, this uh, will be the more popular among uh, the world, and, uh, but the customer wants something uh, individually, uh, individually designed, but uh, it will look like most bad, you don't like this, you will do it or no? Uh, ultimately, you can refuse the work, yes. And, and uh, I told you that uh, this 
presentation some um, uh, buildings which only boxes, I mean, uh, very high boxes, no any design or uh, no architecture. And uh, I, I think it's your idea or his customers. No, no, no. Um, Everything that we show, it's because we develop like this. It's not the, the idea. It can be uh, um, a result of sharing ideas with clients, but it's uh, our concept, our aesthetic line. So, uh, you find it uh, as a box? Yes, they are box. It's, it's, you know, it's, in my opinion, I'm studying in this institution and my teacher, when I show the pictures or making some uh, like methods of this uh, building, and she said that it's box and she is not like it. And that's why I'm asking you to this opinion. You know, architecture, like design, it's something it relates to the opinion of people. So uh, there is no one uh, correct thing or good thing. Every, everyone can have a different opinion. What we try to do in our projects is to have the best functionality to respond to the most part of the needs of the people the best we can. Then the aesthetic part is always questionable. Because every every one of us has different opinions, different tastes. Uh, you like blue and jeans. I like the camel color. Okay, and the last question. What's your advice would be uh, if I would be in a situation where a customer want to do something, but I dislike it. It's not very beautiful. To do with this uh, project or. <laughs> or, or you will try your best to convince your client with the best arguments that it should be as you are telling him, because you are qualified, you studied to be an architect, and there is reasons for everything, aside from the aesthetic. And then the aesthetic, you can always find the, the, the reason, and for that you need to know your client, you need to, to know how to communicate with them. This is also one of the ways to, to achieve that. Can you tell about your most uh, difficult situation in work? Maybe it's related to mentality and uh, English country. Well, since uh, working abroad, uh, my biggest experience is in Kazakhstan because I was not living in country abroad before. I was working, going to work several weeks in other countries, but not staying there. I'm living in Astana, it's already almost three years. So, it, of course, it was there in, in Kazakhstan that I had the most uh, interesting and curiosities uh, in this field. Um, well, I remember at the beginning, uh, it was very hard to uh, to be myself, to, to make myself listen, uh, because usually uh, there they are not used to see uh, a woman in front of the company and coming alone without uh, any uh, any support. And so at the beginning they don't uh, they don't take me so seriously, but. Uh, I, I try hard and I go again and at some point they, they believe me and then they work with me. Small question. Is the client asks you for the design, how many variations you make? Like first like one and then the chains? This is also the... an issue which is related to cultural uh, habits. Of course, Every client in every part of the world uh, likes to change a little bit. So there is <coughs> never happened that the first option that we give is the final thing that will be constructed. There's always some changes, which we need to do. The client is the owner of the project. Uh, in, uh, in, in countries where the work of the, of the architect is not uh, yet so under understand uh, as uh, as the, the, the expertise, uh, the client keeps question asking and asking changes. Ah, no, but now I 
I want one stair there. This doesn't work like that. We have a project that needs to follow certain a certain program that was defined at the beginning. Doesn't mean that we don't do changes, and we do. We try to establish with the client at the beginning that uh, uh, five until five uh, different variations are included in our process of design. For example, and the five, three, ten, depends. This is something that we we can agree with the client at the beginning. Or, depending on the client, if it's a very special client, we do all the changes because at the end you will have always worked with him. So, it's, uh, there's no rescue for anything in that. It just adapts. It's the same in the European Yes, in fact, this happens everywhere. Uh, it's more uh, visible or uh, <coughs> Intense in some cultures, but it happens everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what kind of questions do you have for us? Maybe we can give you some advice. Exactly construction. How? So now it's uh, how do you, do, do you feel? This is all architecture right here. But mainly. Yeah. Let's say mainly. Oh. How do you feel uh, recognize your work as architects, or how it is uh, um, recognizing the construction field uh, in Uzbekistan, the work of, of uh, the architects? What do you feel uh, when you propose something and? I think she already gave some uh, some answers about that. Uh, during the construction process, uh, do you have opportunity to 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 stop when things are going completely change uh, of the, the 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 original plan? Usually, everything is very because, as you maybe understood already, uh, architects. Uh, is it just kind of element is providing the idea of his customer and nothing more because the culture of uh, being architect became more low than it was before well, even, even let's say like that the culture of being an architect because uh, there is a lot of different, <coughs> different uh, reasons of why it became that but at the same time, uh, usually, of course, there are economical reasons. Because people just want to earn some money, and uh, there is not a good, or maybe let's say strong specialist, who can provide his opinion during all of the project. And that's why they're just, uh, just making, just continuing and uh, developing that, what the customer say to them. The main idea is coming from, uh, coming from customers. And at the same time, some of the some of the two species that just there, some of the best there, they can treat. That's why there are some old maybe say let's say some old architects who can provide their opinion. Because they are more respected. Yes, of course they have because they have some kind of uh, reputation. Reputation, yeah. And everything etc. But at the same time, even to them, sometimes <coughs> Let's say even usually it goes to be very difficult. And that's why you see what you see around and what we tomorrow and today. So there are some changes in, uh, in the private sector because our customers they think the, the main idea is what they think about what architecture is. And nothing more. You know, like that, nothing. So they, they, they think if they are a customer, they pay. So it should be exactly that pay, how they think it should be. So sound is not sound is not uh, a reason. But then uh, climate is not a reason. And then let's say color is not a reason. And environment is not a reason. And even the landscape is not a reason on the construction point and even on the project itself. Uh. 
<laughs> and welcome. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I read recently uh, an article about uh, the about the government saying that it's there is a need of improving the quality of the architecture. They want to to show Uzbekistan in a different way. So do you believe that things will change? Uh, awesome. That's why we're here. Oh, need to believe. <laughs> They have to believe, and, and it's a normal situation that uh, the world will be globalizing and Uzbekistan will not be uh, on all sides of this uh, process. And that's why we understood that one day there will be a lot of changes and they start. And that's why you are here too. So let's say, let's call us, uh, let's call all of us a kind of. I would say uh, all of you and myself, when I'm here, we are in a mission now. We should change this. It's connected with that one question. Uh, is in uh, Uzbekistan possible uh, other people, not architects, can, can do projects? Or only architects can do projects? There is uh, only an architect. Right. Well, it depends on your yeah. point. <laughs> you mean permission? So, uh, I think uh, in this regard, um, um, by your question before, Uzbekistan needs more concept. I don't like when they say, when people say, um, this is more conceptual project. Everything it's needs concept. to be conceptual. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need more concept than uh, construction. If uh, one building will be built, real rich concept according to the culture that will be enough. Uh, from what I saw when I was around, uh, there are uh, some buildings that are being already constructed and the project is not still decided. There is no final project yet. There is so deadline. <laughs> the deadline is very important. <laughs> So this means that uh, some uh, draft uh, person from the construction company, for example, would do a plan initially, and then uh, they can hire separately an architect for the facade, an architect for the interior, another and architect. Many companies in have to do their own. Uh, yeah, they work in construction. Yeah, it's called that part of the 
Yeah. Actually, yeah. Golden House and <laughs> Golden House and Modern Buildings aren't architects. They are developers. Yeah. No. Yeah. They, they, hire, they hire architects and they just implement the project. But who are the, which architects they hire? Uh, external architects or they have architect teams external. in their external. Or external. Internal. 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 external but uh, then they study in, internal uh, specialists uh, and how they choose design. the architects then it's the one that uh, it's a local way. Way. <laughs> sometimes uh, they, they can choose the, those architects who they know because they just, just quite enough or those ones who is more, let's say, more convenient to them, who is listening for them more. <laughs> so uh, this uh, this uh, situation goes just exactly the same as in the private sector. It's just another money and another level. So maybe useful information could be that Uzbekistan is also the architectural market for the the both countries and. The first one is the Korean. Korea has got here already good projects like the multifunctional ice complex, ice skate complex, should be built, residential complex, not far from that, also should be built, that international airport airport terminal, the second for course of Tashkent should be built, new lead. And your ideas like the original ideas and no one can influence them. So they're taking the <coughs> developments here, and we are just standing and watching how it develops. So, and the architects like you, how do you move on in the market? You uh, search uh, architecture company. Is there a lot of architecture companies in uh, Uzbekistan? There are or? two categories: government folk and private. Mm -hmm. Government folk client always the government, and private but not always. <laughs> for example, for example, engineering company. You mean? Give an example. They have all. They have all. They are joint companies. They have all. They are joint companies. They have all. They are joint не, я не об этом, я говорю то, что проектные институты работают на государство. То есть любые заказчики, которые... На частный государство. На частный государство. Brands, let's say there is a local flag association, which which is not international. Alva Cesar. Alva Cesar. There is a, an Alva Cesar in the in Kazakhstan in the Uzbekistan. Sorry. Of course, of course not. Do do uh, there are some buildings of Alva Cesar in uh, Kazakhstan? No. You see, not that bad. <laughs> so what we have. Uh, but Albert Caesar has a lot of buildings in his own country yeah. uh, because he's recognized. Though he's not, uh, uh, in fact, he doesn't earn a lot of money. He doesn't have a big company, but he has a high reputation. Everybody knows him in our country and in a lot of uh, countries abroad. He's recognized. So. Uh, <laughs> So I was asking, even at the Albert Caesar with the João Padreiro, uh, no there is no brand of architecture yet. Uh, we have we have some old architects who became a brand. And which are they like like, like Albert Caesar? You see, Caesar. for example, tomorrow uh, those uh, by those buildings who were built in uh, previous times. So it's uh, Soviet modernism. There you will see it. So it's Karabovsa, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, Akhamjanya. Then, but Akhamjanya was the latest period. Um, let's say after after an independent period, but he built just a lot of uh, government buildings. Then uh, he 
So it's it's about all generation, older generation. Of so they became like a kind of a brand, yeah. For yeah. all the architects, they're well known, they are interesting, and uh, and so on. So you will see tomorrow these buildings, uh, and uh, uh, exactly uh, separately of them, there are some let's say more younger architects. They are more than 50, 55 years old, and uh, they have some. Lot of, they, they have some buildings, they have a lot of customers, but let's say so, they have just a lot of buildings and a lot of work to do, but uh, they not became the a kind of brand. Let's say like they, they didn't become. Without advertising, you can see their style and their signature. The, there is no, yeah, there, there is no kind of style. But only, only architects or somebody into this world can recognize, okay, this is the world of that. Mm -hmm. okay. The best period you will see tomorrow is a Soviet Union. And constructivism uh, beginning of the 1920s. We should turn again to have more power. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.